So I've got a video about trying to update my VCSA appliance. Let's point to that and go to the summary tab. You saw an error about fetching updates in an error. Um, and actually we can click on learn more and this will jump over to Skyline Health. But anyhow, that's not the issue. When I actually try to do the VCSA 7.0 to 7.0B update, I get a problem. Okay, and that's the issue here that I want to focus on. So let's go to the updates tab. So that's not good. So that's one error. Let's get that in the clipboard in case we need to Google search for that soon. All right, next, uh, generate report. Well, even that's missing right now, so that's not so good. Let's see what happens if we clear that error. Go back to this page. And that's not so good either. So we might get out of this by rebooting the VAMI appliance, but I don't think so, because <laughs> I've actually rebooted the VAMI appliance earlier this week, and that didn't seem to really help me much. So I'm going to go ahead and open up VAMI manually. Let's go to updates here. And let's see how we do over there. So VCSA Appliance, not so happy. It's been a week or two, I think, since my video, and um, I'm kind of ready to move past it. In other words, find a workaround rather than wait around for uh, seeing if there's something server side that's happening. All right, so it's June 22nd, it came out, now it's July 3rd, so yeah, let's get her done. We're probably gonna see the same error here. Wait for it. Yep, we go to backups. It opens a new tab, which is wonderful. Tap on end time twice to do a reverse sort. It just backed up about less, a little more than half an hour ago. Cool. So we can say yes to this and then watch a nasty error. All right, so here we go. Time to Google away. So first of all, we've got um, this error here, just a second. This error, that's the first one. Put that in quotes. <laughs> so we get a variety pack of errors here. And we probably want to do that for, say, the last week because, well, 7.0b just came out. All right, so that's one thing to look for. We're also going to look for this. So we got two things to look for. And I stumbled across a workaround on my phone the other day. And um, I'm hoping to find it. Shoot. Four days ago. Here we go. So basically someone had some file to SSH in and delete on the um, PCSA server. That's not it. Okay, what's the update here? Unexpected error. So how about we look for the word fetching? Ah, oh, there we go. And this person uh, did not find it. Okay, how about this error? April 7th, it seems kind of unlikely. There it is. This is the article I found. It's a month ago, though. So it's a little weird, but people found that if they delete that file, where well, they're good to go. Let's check out that article. I'm opening it in a new tab. Okay, we got a problem with rendering there. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. Here's the article. And yes, this is the one. And they're actually talking about a 6.7, but we're going to go for it because it's by far the closest article I found. You can reboot, it doesn't help, log in and delete this file. All right, so off we go. Hopefully this will work out as a fix and I can put this as a fix for my VCSA upgrade failure video because I suspect I'm not the only person running into this. So um, always good to help lots of people if possible. And um, while Putty's coming up there, let's have a look at my video. So if we go to my homepage here, let's bring that up. There's the homepage. Go to videos, and then we're going to go to the vSphere 7 playlist. So view all, view full playlist. Here we go. Not working. Um, so we get two videos, actually. So that one, 100 views. Okay. Kind of popular. 123. Okay, so a significant pe number of people are, you know, Googling around and finding that. I doubt they're watching the video for some other reason. So, all right. We're most likely going to need shell here, right? There we go. And what's the command? Well, they want me to delete that file. So 
we're going to simply uh, delete that file. Let's have a look here. Type ahead should be our friend here. Yep. Okay, so it's a file in that directory. And uh, there it is. And it's dated, um, so May 30, software update, state config, June 25th. So we've been stuck because there's this file hanging out there and June 23rd is when 7.0 update B came out. Eh, kind of, let's have a look again at that. So here's the thing. Um, this popular article about this, I'm talking about ESX CLI, but when did VCSA come out? Did I talk about that a little bit in here? Yeah, no, not really. All right. so. Um, let's just move onward. So we're going to try this and we're going to delete that file. And, um, he's telling me it's safe. I've got backups, not really a big deal. And notice this command, uh, actually this person assumes, you know, your kind of Linuxy command line stuff. So that's fine, but I'm going to do RM space software and type state there. Type ahead worked. Okay. Read list again. File's gone. And now minimize, minimize, and give it another try here. So here we go. What if we just um, hit back arrow, see what happens, except the EULA again. There you go. That triggered a running pre update checks again. And it still fails miserably. If we hit finish, it's working. Okay, it did not fail. It just uh, echoed an error briefly. But that error was just a leftover browser thing. I probably could have logged up or started all over again. So fantastic success. This is what success looks like. And I doubt it's going to take the 180 minutes, I think it said, for, for it to potentially do. So there's your, um, there's your workaround. Thank you. Thank you, whoever wrote this, right? I kind of can't believe um, this, this kind of old article on 6.7 is hitting me now on 7.0. Let's dive into that just slightly further here. Okay, um, playlist, remember my playlist, let's go back. All right, we've got, um, let's see, so this is me updating, let's see, smoothly, wait a minute. Hmm. Seamless, that's the word I use, there it is, seamless. Why is it way down here? So going from 6.7 to 7.0 with no DNS changes, this article, uh, this video, excuse me, and article that goes with it, the download article, 4,000, oh my. So yes, I am an upgraded person. So maybe I've got some legacy left over in a home lab where going from 6.7 6 to 7.0 somehow ended up where I can't automatically get config or for uh, updates from the server. Now that I'm getting to B, I'm comfortable that probably going to 7.0 C or whatever comes later will probably be just fine. But um, yeah, just waiting around for uh, weeks to go by was not going to help me. And look at that, I'm already at 48%. And remember, I have backups, so I have no risk here. And frankly, I could actually just rebuild the appliance from scratch. But that seemed like a cheat, like downloading 7.0.0.b, I think is what they call the download for UCSA. That would be a cheat. That would be kind of cop out. I like to uh, <laughs> unearth a bug. Well, not really, but I like to find a fix to a bug and help other people with that. So looks like the sucker's flying right along. I think I'm just going to keep the camera rolling to see what happens when this um, VAMI here, see VCSA colon 5480, when this VAMI interface for updating, when it's at 100%, what happens next? Because this is my first time upgrading within the 7.0 family. You don't use this VAMI upgrade button for going from 6.5 to 6.7 or 6.7 to 7.0. Major releases are not done this way. They're done with an ISO download where you double click the ISO and mount it and say Windows and run an installer, which basically replaces the VCSA VM, magically moving all the stuff over and the MAC address and IP and then um, boots the new one if it succeeds and uh, boots the old one if it fails. So that's the process, but this is just a point release. This should not be doing anything all that fancy other than a whole bunch of bundles coming into the VCSA appliance, which is Photon OS, a variant of Linux. And that's taking a little, a little while. So it's at under 80 minutes. I'm at a NVMe drive, an M.2 Samsung 960 Evo in this case. I believe so it really should not take anywhere near that long now if we try to log in here and look around to verify what kind of system i happen to have here probably not going to do so well um well it's still working because the vcsa appliance itself is the underpinnings of this right 
So yeah, it's failing. Can't even, um, you know, reset to green, for instance. So I'm not going to have the most, most dynamic view there because I'm in the middle of servicing my VCSA appliance. It's stopping a whole bunch of services. We got to wait for it to restart. And then we'll see if we successfully made it to 7.0B. So again, um, stay tuned. I'm probably going to just pause the video at this point and then resume when I make some progress. Uh, quick time check here. I'll probably start around 8.40 p.m. Okay, it took under 20 minutes. And again, this is on an NVMe drive. And I can click close now. Apparently it's done. And let's see, it's doing another check. No updates found, that is a good sign. If we look at update history, we can see what just happened here and we successfully moved. I'm liking this a lot, this is good. Um, interesting. So I did a patch on June 7th. I uh, kind of forgot about that, but okay. So apparently I've done a patch before and something broke since then. I don't quite know what to say there. <laughs> um, it's too bad. It's apparently a little brittle for me. If we had done a fresh install of 7.0, maybe I would never would have seen this issue, but you know, I'm happy now. So let's have a look at this. And there it is, 7.0b, and that's what it's called. If we search for that build number, we made it. We've made it to the latest version. That also means if we light this up, we're no longer authenticated. That's fine. I've got an article about avoiding timeouts, by the way. But of course, when the whole thing restarts, you have an inevitable timeout uh, or login process to go through. But anyhow, so the VCSA appliance is restarted. We're coming back in and we're going to be on the main page. And it's a little extra slow that first time you log in, especially if it just rebooted. It might not even be ready for me to see the vSphere client interface quite yet. Now, v Vami's telling me it should be, right? So Vami over here is saying everything's good, 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 good. But that was a little extra slow, I would say. Okay, so remember I was trying to look at, hey, what kind of storage is that VM running on, the VCSA appliance? Well, let's have a look. So vCenter is where? right here. So there's our vCenter appliance and we can see that it's on a data store right over here, which is on a Samsung Evo. Hmm. So yeah, that is just a SATA drive. So this could have been faster on NVMe. I was wrong. It looks like I did a vMotion at some point. And now you know why I have very clearly labeled um, drives so I can kind of see where they live. So if we look in the Samsung 850 Evo, a good old SATA device. You're going to see a VMware vCenter server on there. So now you know what to expect. Um, even on a modest SATA drive, that's an SSD, but it's still SATA. Um, we got the job done. And I didn't even bother to snapshot by like right clicking the VM and backing up with backup products that do native backups of VMs. That's not supported from here forward, I believe, or at some point forward on 7.0. So I just want to point that out. Now, I could have done a snapshot for a, a way to roll back, but um, really, we've got the backup mechanism built into VCSA. So that's why I boldly went forward with doing a legitimate upgrade of the VCSA appliance while recording this video for you to witness the whole ride there. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, there you go. I appreciate you watching this video and thank you for visiting Tinker Try, IT at home with a whole collection of vSphere 7 articles already. Bye now.